Thank you. That's beautiful. It's so good to be back at Williams. I just appreciate the opportunity. appreciate you letting me come and share with you in the absence of your pastor. I want to wish you all a happy new year, which also makes me think on Friday I had a conversation with uh, Barry and Amanda Howard, and they said for me to be sure and wish you a happy new year for them. If you want to follow the reading of the scripture, we're reading from the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel, beginning with verse 38, a very familiar story. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the Lord's word for this day. I have a preacher friend who says, women hate this text. <laughs> he may be right. At least I can see why he might feel that way. It is a very difficult text, one that may seem to be to some unfair to hard workers. First, see the picture. Jesus and the disciples arrive in the town of Bethany. They go immediately to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who it seems to have been a home away from home for them. Evidently, Jesus had a crowd traveling with him, or the townspeople gathered to see him. At any rate, he sat down in the living room or on the patio and began to teach the group. They seemed to be hanging on his every word. Among the hearers, possibly seated on the front row, was one of the sisters, Mary. The scripture says she sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Suddenly the crowd parts as Martha, the other sister, comes storming out of the kitchen. She does not hesitate but comes right up to the Lord and says, Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. What would you expect Jesus to say? Oh, dear Martha, how thoughtless of us. You are doing all the work preparing for us. Of course we'll get you some help. Then you would be surprised. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. If you were Martha, how would you feel? First, you would be embarrassed. Then you might get angry. After all, Mary was being a couch potato while Martha was making sure that there would be something to eat for lunch. But Mary gets commended and Martha gets embarrassed. If it were anyone but Jesus, we might say, boy, did he stick his foot in his mouth saying Mary has chosen the better part. What is going on here? There are many things going on here. First, let us realize that Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. He realized how stressed out Martha was. Martha was one of those people who were determined that no one would come as a guest into her house and not be well taken care of. You've known people like that, hadn't you? Perhaps she was determined that word would not go around Bethany that Jesus came to Martha's house and she didn't even feed him. Martha needed to be the hostess with the mostest. So Jesus sought to relieve her stress. He told Martha he recognized she was in a dither about all this stuff, but for no reason. He might have said, a peanut butter sandwich will be sufficient. Of course, you and I never get in a situation like that, do we? 
we don't ever wear ourselves out preparing for company so that when they get there, we're too tired to enjoy them. We don't let the things of the world stress us out, do we? Listen, Jesus is standing by saying, as he did to the waves on Galilee, peace, be still. Perhaps that is why Jesus seems to brag on Mary. She has put herself in a position to listen to Jesus so that her life will be under his control. We need to hear and remember the words of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that passes understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When we have a lot to do, when things start to pile up on us, where do we start to solve the problem? Do we start by making a list of all the things we must do and get them in order of importance? Does that weigh us down, make us discouraged? How would it be if we started out by sitting at the feet of Jesus and asking him to order our lives for us? It seems to me that may be the reason that Jesus mentioned Martha, Mary so kindly. It was not that he did not appreciate what Martha was trying to do, but there was Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, soaking up his instructions on how to live life. Prayer should be like that. Too often, though, when we are sitting at the feet of Jesus, we're doing all the talking. Rather, we should also be doing a lot of the listening. What would Jesus say to you if you really listened? Do you think we really want to know? Or are we satisfied with simply bringing our petitions to God wait without waiting for a response? Michael Casey says prayer is larger than any of us. It is a less a question of bringing prayer into our hearts than bringing our hearts into prayer. Not drawing water from the sea to fill a bath, but being immersed in an immense ocean and becoming one with it. Do we need to join Mary at the feet of, feet of Jesus listening to what he says? Going back to our text, we hear Jesus say to Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. What a common condition that is today. There are so many things with which to be concerned. What about the terrible economic conditions? How will we survive? What about our desire to be recognized as people of importance? Don't we have to work constantly at being out front, leading the way to be recognized as good people? Or are we worried and upset about many things because we need to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his words to us? What is Jesus' remedy to Martha's problem? You know, I imagine that Jesus knew that Martha was not really the kind of person who came bursting into a room and pitching a fit as Martha did that day but he also knew that she had gotten her priorities out of order. So Jesus said to her, only one thing is needed. What do you think that thing was? Obviously, since Jesus had affirmed Mary, it had something to do with what she was about. What Jesus was trying to get across to Martha was that the first thing that is needed in our lives is a focus on the Word of God. Above all else, we should listen to the voice of God through His Holy Spirit in our lives. Then we should move forward to do His will and all the tasks which He has given us. <clears throat> you see, ladies and everyone else, Jesus was not saying that what Martha was about was not good. He was simply saying that her priorities were out of order. She was missing her chance to sit and learn at Jesus' feet. Before long, the opportunity would no longer be available to her. Surely the group needed to eat. 
but that could be taken care of when the time came. You see, our deepest needs are spiritual, not physical. You will remember that Jesus told us man cannot live by bread alone. At this point, you may say, Bob, you quit preaching and gone to meddling. But I am made to think of the fact that so many times today, our young people are overwhelmed by this same problem. How do we order our priorities? There are so many things that are good. It is important to be a good student. For those who have the ability, it's good to be an outstanding athlete or a fine musician. It is important to set one's goals so that he or she may provide comfortably for their family. We teach and emphasize all those things as we should. But so often we fail to teach that the foundation of everything that is good is the word of God. Our lives are to be ordered in that way. For instance, if one of those things I have mentioned conflicts with responsibility to the church, which one gets left behind? We say the church will always be there, and we can part, uh, be a part of it as we will. After all, it's nice to be good, but it's more important to be well known. Do you remember the children's poem that probably we all learned when we were small? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. So it is. If we do not choose the better part, our lives can be like Humpty Dumpty. There will be no way to put them together again. The better part is the word of God and the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That must be the central focus. Then we can hear our Lord say, you have chosen the better part. Then one other matter that needs to come to our attention before we're through. Jesus said to Martha, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Notice that final phrase, it will not be taken away from her. The point is that the things of this world are all transitory. If we focus on them, if they become the most important part of our lives, we will end up one day with nothing. But if our foundation is the word of God that is eternal and cannot be taken away, which do you choose to invest your life in the transitory things of this world or to invest your life in the eternal things of God? knowing that he will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we would put our lives in order. We would, O oh Lord, seek your guidance. And in this new year, Help us to make that our most important priority through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.